All along the Holderness coast, there's evidence of old sea defences that are no longer being maintained. Ideas about how best to manage this coastline are changing. As costs escalate and concern about effects on the environment grow, defending parts of the coast is no longer seen as a long-term sustainable strategy. And many experts think we need to let natural cycles run their course. But for some people, the new sustainable strategy means their homes and businesses will suffer, and within their lifetimes, a few may even be lost altogether. Welcome to Kilnsey, the most southerly village on the Holderness coast, and a place that has a long history of being eroded by the sea. In the last 150 years, this village has lost over 300 metres of land. Because of costs and potential effects further down the coast, East Riding's council has decided not to support sea defences here, angering many of the residents. We've been abandoned, really, because they say that, that there's no benefit to them. It's a small community. Uh, as I say, eight properties here. There are probably 80 or 90 people live in the village. And it's not worth it to them to spend what would be quite a substantial amount of money to protect a small number of people. But coastal erosion isn't the only challenge that Kilnsey faces. A couple of hundred metres across the peninsula is the Humber estuary. And because the area is very low-lying, the whole village is susceptible to flooding, both from the sea and the Humber. We will, probably within the next hundred years, uh, finish up as an island. And the other side of that is the property prices. It will be extremely difficult to sell property at the going rates because of the threat of the flooding. Um, and as people use property now as a nest egg, that nest egg's disappeared. That... On the Humber side of the peninsula, there are already flood banks. Here, they're protected by large rocks. These banks are maintained by the Environment Agency. But on the coastal side, rapid erosion and rising sea levels mean the Environment Agency are refusing to fund any flood defences. And the residents have been left to sort out their own solution. This is, is the new flood bank. Um, so the intention is that when it comes over, the first bit of protection will push the water into the ditch then it will run through into the, the borrow pit that you see down there. Then at the end, there is an escape system through the ditches that will eventually run the water into the Humber. Now it does work because earlier uh, last year, we had some real big tides, they did come over. It did run into the ditch, which was a real test for it. Building the bank and allowing natural processes to do the job is called soft engineering. But as the sea continues to erode inland, the flood banks only expected to last for 20 to 30 years, and Kilnsey's residents face a very uncertain future. If you're living there now in Kilnsey, then I think you've got to realise that um, your house has a has a finite has a finite life, and that finite life isn't too far ahead in the future, I don't think, because the defences that were built last year. I think will probably only last 20 years, something like that. I can't see them being extended for more than that. Uh, and so people in Kilsey with properties, I've got to um, manage their expectations, if you like. It's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult, it's a very emotive subject. Very difficult. And it's not just Kilsey's residents that are affected by erosion. This is Sandy Beach's caravan park, the village's largest business. And like many other business people along the coast, Sandy Beach's owner, Lee Reed, is all too familiar with the problems of erosion. Uh, the erosion goes in sort of cycles. It takes, some years it can take hardly any. Other years, about every eight to ten years, it has a big erosion, which can take up to ten metres at a time. We've probably lost about 50 bases into the sea. Sandy Beaches is based on the site of a World War II army base called Fort William. During the war, groins were installed to create a beach and protect the gun emplacements and lookout towers from erosion by the sea. But without being maintained, the groins and the beach quickly disappeared, 
leaving the coastal buildings vulnerable to erosion. Back of the building fell off a couple of weeks ago, so that means now that we're going to have to demolish that building so that it's not dangerous to anybody walking onto the beach. That'll probably be demolished within the next two weeks. Obviously you're losing land, so you're losing, well you're losing land, you, your capital on your business as well. And we're knocking the buildings down, obviously you've got to demolish them, which costs a lot of money. To help businesses like Lee's, the council have launched what's called a rollback scheme. Under the scheme, park owners are given favourable planning consideration if they want to move back onto agricultural land because their sites are being eroded by the sea. They're also allowed to build five new caravan bases for every four they lose. Lee's already bought the field behind his park and is hoping to roll the site back. But like Kilnsey's residents, his business faces an uncertain future. We're going through planning, we've bought the land and we're going through planning at the moment with it. But we expect that could take up to 12 months. I definitely believe they should be doing more to help. I mean, it's a good thriving business that brings a lot into the community. A lot of people, shops make you out of it, post office, the local bars. So yeah, I do think they should help it a bit more. But increasingly, geographers, engineers and other experts say building sea defences isn't the answer as they affect much larger areas by changing the movement of material along the shore. And any defences at Kilnsey could seriously affect Spurn Point to the south. Without the erosion, not just Kilnsey, much, much further up the East Yorkshire coast, Spurn would not exist. That may well affect the economics of Northern Britain because of the size of the Humber estuary and it may alter the shipping channels, the shipping lanes, the management of that system. As well as being a unique landform, Spurn Point's important for shipping in the area. At its tip is the UK's only permanently manned lifeboat station. There's also the launch and control point for associated British ports, the organisation responsible for escorting shipping up and down the Humber. Because of its economic importance, historically the strategy has been to maintain a permanent road link to the end of the spit, by literally trying to hold the spit in place. Man has intervened on the peninsula in ways of removing get gravel, putting in timber groins and putting in concrete revetments and defences along the peninsula with a view of holding it in a fixed line. Now that's not what the peninsula wants to do, it wants to move. And we're now at that stage where we're allowing those man-made defences to break down and allowing the peninsula to wash over itself. And at the same time, trying to keep the road link to the end for the RNLI and associated British ports intact. Allowing the defences to break down and gradually replacing the old built-up road with a new movable low-lying one is already having an effect. A few times a year, the sea washes sand over the peninsula into the Humber estuary. Very slowly, Spurn is once again on the move. In the short term, I think we, the Wildlife Trust is committed in ensuring that we have a road link down to the end. In the medium term, I think we will lose that public permanent road link and we will have to look at more innovative ways of getting people out onto the headland. But I think the land spit is here for a very long time, but just not in the way that we know it. All along the Holderness coast, traditional management strategies that meant defending the land and trying to hold back the enormous force of the sea are giving way to more sustainable approaches. And often, that means rethinking the way we interact with the natural world.